going to the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It's good to be here. And I'm very honored to have uh, Pastor Hauser here again with us who came by the fellowship along with his sister, uh, Jerry, Sister Jerry Thorpe. Let's give him a warm welcome. Amen. Both of them have been with us a couple of times, amen, um, on different occasions that we've had. And, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Jerry uh, uh, Thorpe. We go way, way, way back, uh, all the way to the Middle Skill Center. I was director of the Skill Center, and I hired her as my financial officer. Praise amen. Lord. And she was very faithful and uh, very supportive and uh, ultimately, uh, her children, I first, that was the first, the second time I ran for office here in the city of Indianapolis. She has children who are successful professionals now, but they were young whippersnappers and didn't mind getting out knocking on doors around the city for me. So we go way back and she's been wanting to come and she said we, uh, she was in Nashville, Tennessee, week before last when we had our anniversary, said I was going to come, couldn't make it, so I'm going to try again. Of course, I just tell anyone, say, well, we, we look to see you when you can make it. Amen. 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 And look who's here with us today. Amen. So let's give God some praise. You know, it's a wonderful thing when people purpose in their heart to come and be with you. Amen. You've heard me say a million times that, uh, you know, you can't make people be nice to you, you know, or even think about you. So it is a special thing when they decided to come up. All those churches in Indianapolis. Came Amen. to the best church that was uh, doors open at 11 o'clock. <laughs> God bless you. We thank God for you. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Hauser if he would, Dr. Hauser, if he come and lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. I just feel it is a good time with the world being the way it is yes. that we need to hear from God. Yes. And so I'm going to ask the servant of the Lord if he would come and lead us in prayer. Amen. 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 Will you bow your heads, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come once again thanking you for all the things you have done for us. We come thanking you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for having man on your mind, Lord, that we do all this now because you thought about us. We ask you to continue to bless this congregation today, Father. Bless the leader of the church and lead him and guide him in, in the directions that he should go, Lord. Continue to bless. And as people walk into the doors of his church, Father, yes, as they walk in, let them feel the presence of the Holy oh, Spirit. Hallelujah. Know that God is here. We want you to bless this service bless this day, Father, Lord. that when we leave this day, Lord, that we'll know that truly the Holy Spirit dwell in this house. Yes, Lord. That we're able to go out and tell somebody, oh, what a service you missed this morning. When Reverend Charlie preached, he preached the word. And when the songs that were sang, the songs were beautiful, uplifting and praising God uh, in his holy name. We ask you church right now, Father, that the Holy Spirit did let it shine upon us this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We can't have enough prayer at a time like amen. these, especially from the servant of the Lord. Uh, it's good to see each and every one. I pray that um, it has been an eventful week uh, in a positive way. Um, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are uh, just so thankful to be here. Uh, thank you for allowing us uh, another day. Thank you for allowing us another year. Uh, Lord, if I had a thousand, or ten thousand tongues, I still couldn't praise you enough. Amen. Amen. You're worthy. Amen. So worthy. Amen. And I am so unworthy. Uh, thank you for Jesus. <laughs> for all my imperfections have been washed away. Amen, by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we ask you now just to come and let your Holy Spirit take full control. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Move me out of the way. Yes, sir. Amen. That they might not even see me, but instead 
in their spirit hear from thee. We desire, Lord, to hear from thee. Amen. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for thou art my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. 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 Let's give him some praise. Amen. 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 All right. I will say briefly, I went to the barber yesterday. I, I don't go to the barber, but maybe once a year. And I purpose to go, because you got to go sometime. But. So I went to a fellow that I knew. Knew my brother. He knows a lot of guys in the city. And I uh, got there, and there was a brother, Richard, sitting in the chair. Sister Calhoun. Young brother sitting in the chair. And uh, his name was Pierre. Pierre opened the door. So I stepped in, the brother, because we greeted each other, the brother said, man, said, you know my pastor? You know, so I, I looked at the brother, I said, you know, what, what church, what, you know, <laughs> amen. But come to find out that uh, he's your brother, your young brother, the, the day he dropped you off. It was the first time that I'd seen him, amen, and jumped up, and so we, we hugged and said, hey, man, well, he's one of mine, then." not he? <laughs> Come to find out that the, the uh, brother Miller used to get his hair cut. Wow. A time lived in the area. And, yeah. and of course, Pierre knew him and, uh, and had utmost respect for him. Amen. 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 And, and talked about him a little bit. I said, well, I, I know the family and we worship together. So Praise you never know right. where you go, who you're going to run into. Amen. 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 So we thank God for that uh, opportunity yesterday to, to, to see him. And he, he said it with some excitement, some enthusiasm. So I thank God for that. Today, we, we're not going to tarry long, uh, just long enough, but if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Acts, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. Amen. Acts, New Testament, 8th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. have it say amen. Amen. amen okay I'm gonna just to give total context to this I'm gonna read uh, most of this so you read along with me it said now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza yes, Lord. this is desert <laughs> so he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who has charge of all her treasury mm -hmm. and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. And he was reading Isaiah, that prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake yes. this chariot. Yes. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? All right. And he said, how can I, unless someone guide me? Mm. And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Yeah. The place in the scripture which he, was, which he read was, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, yeah. and as a lamb before it shear is done. So he opened not his mouth. Mm. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophets say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture, preach Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see here is water. What hindereth me from being baptized? All right. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said, I believe yes. that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. So he commanded the chariots to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, Amen. and he baptized him. Yes. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord 
caught Philip away yeah. so that the eunuch saw him no more, right. and he went on his, very, his way rejoicing. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, Amen. reading, and understanding of his holy Amen. and most righteous word. Amen. Amen. We want to use for thought today, salvation is never an accident. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Salvation is never Amen. an accident. You're going to pray with me, aren't you? Right. Amen. Amen. There is a message from the, from the Lord today. You know, accidents happen. Whether it's car, house, equipment, you know, natural disasters, personal injury, accidents, job, school, anywhere. Accidents we know do happen. Some accidents might be classified uh, as minor and some major, depending on what the outcome is and what financially is involved. Right. Some accidents can cost a lot and even cost the life of some people involved. Oh, yeah. You're going to pray with me, huh? Oh, yeah. The reality is that accidents, uh, amen, uh, have multiple impacts on the lives of people involved. Yeah. In our scriptural area today, we find uh, a very interesting situation uh, where uh, the interaction and the exchange of two people uh, ultimately changed the lives of many people. Yeah. And we, today we're talking about uh, Philip, and he was not Philip the one that was a disciple. Right. A lot of times people get that mixed up. He was called Philip the Evangelist, Amen. which had a witness. He was one of the 12 that had been picked to be a deacon, yeah. to wait on the, on the tables of the church. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Amen. But he was a, a, a man of great faith. And ultimately, uh, we find that according to the scripture that we read, that uh, he must have been asleep. Hmm. Said now an angel of the Lord spoke to him, saying, Arise and go. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go toward Gaza. Yes, Move yes, down sir. from Jerusalem. Yes, uh -huh. uh, and, 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 and so he did that. It doesn't say anything about him arguing or debating or going through. He was obedient to the spirit of God through this angel. Amen. Now what happens here, we find that next as he comes into that area, he sees this eunuch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now the eunuch is an interesting term that has a couple of uh, meanings to it. Come on down. Uh -huh. Biblically, eunuchs were uh, like what they call chamberlains. Mm -hmm. Those were men who were assigned to the responsibility yeah. of uh, the raw household. Amen. They could, whatever the royal household could be. And kings had pretty large affairs. They had administrators for this, but the chamberlain or the eunuch. Yes, sir. Uh, historically, also eunuchs could be those who were assigned to the king's harem. All right. Or overseeing his concubines. Right. That was a serious responsibility. And what they would do sometimes is castrate right. the, the eunuch so that they would not have be tempted. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Being around the, the king's heralds and concubines. Amen. But a eunuch does not always have to be castrated. All right. But All that's right. what over the years evolved to a certain extent, and so that was. So, But it says here that he was a eunuch over the treasury right. of Canaan. Uh -huh. Now we pause for a second just because there's a lot of historical significance here. Uh -huh. Amen. One is that term Canaan. Yes, that's a term that's been referred oftentimes to queens who are in charge of a kingdom or a domain. Amen. You could put it on the same level as a pharaoh. I wish I had a witness. Uh, amen. Or even a Caesar. Uh -huh. So that gives you the elevation of who Candace the queen was and tell you that this guy wasn't just anybody. All right. All right. He wasn't just an accountant. Amen. He was the head over the wealth of a kingdom. Yeah. Now we know what Ethiopia is about. That's just for those of us sometimes who forget on, when we read the on. Bible, we think it's all white folks up in there. And the reality is there are very few white folks up in there. I'm not being prejudiced, but we need to every now and then be reminded that a lot of the talk about the Bible, the story, and the people involved are people of color. I wish I had a witness. Amen. People of color. And so it's over Ethiopia. And so it was that Philip was assigned to go down, and it wasn't an accident that they ran into each other. Sometimes we think, well, things just happened because it was an accident. I accidentally saw a person. I accidentally was, I had planned to do something, but I was accidentally, you know, and got you where you all of a sudden from there, 
all types of things happen. This was no accident. Amen. He was woken by the Spirit of God through an angel and said, go. Now, here's the one point we need to realize. This intersection is important because the, the, the eunuch was in a chariot. Come on. Amen. If we updated that, he probably was in either a rose or you understand what they're expensive. And he was moving. Now, had Philip decided to debate or get into a discussion with the angel about do you know what time it is? Do you know how far Gaza is? Can we get this done tomorrow? If he had got into that, he might have missed the appointed time to run into the eunuch. I wish I had a witness. And what does that say to us? When the spirit moves you to do something. Yeah. Amen. Don't come up with a bunch of excuses. On, there was the Lord say, do it, do it. Get to it, in fact. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> and so it was that, that Philip was obedient and he ran and saw the, the, the chariot moving and then the spirit speaks to him again. He said, hey, overtake it, get on. <laughs> and what, does, you know, what are the chances? Now here we talk we in life accidents chance by chance. Yeah. He's running, gets on, and he hears the eunuch reading the word of God. Yeah. Now what are the chances? The eunuch is reading the word of God, but he don't, he don't understand what he's reading. Yeah. What are the chances that the man that God had directed through the angel to show up could read the word of God for you? I wish I had a witness. Y'all not catching that. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, there's nothing by chance when it comes to the kingdom. That's right. It may appear by chance, Come on, but there's nothing by chance. God has preordained. He has yeah. purposed certain things to happen. Using yeah. What are the chances that Richard is sitting right there? Hello. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. After his testimony, what he shared with us about, hey, this, that, he said, but I want to be here because I feel led to be here by the Spirit of God. What if he kicked back? I think he told me one time. I said, well, you know, probably if I hadn't done this, I might have been stuck doing the wrong thing. I wish I had a witness. Amen. But the spirit of the law stirring in him says, oh, I got to go. I got to be where God can use me. I wish I had a witness. And so what we find here is that the uh, Ethiopian eunuch couldn't interpret what he was reading. And he asked him, he said, do you understand what it is you're reading? This great man of power said, how can I understand? Hey, man, let somebody help me. There are folks out there in the world now. How can they understand about Jesus, about his power, his saving power, his saving grace, uh, his forgiveness, his love? I wish I had a witness. How can it let some of us tell him about Jesus and the goodness that he, can, he represents? Amen. And so we look down here and we see. He goes on to explain to him what the scripture means. Amen. Now, as they say, it gets gooder and gooder. All right. Now, he didn't been told why they moving. The chariot probably wasn't rocking, but it was rolling. You know what I'm saying? Down the road. Now, it had to impress the eunuch's heart and mind and spirit. Because he's riding. Now, he's gotten greater insights about this the Savior, and he sees the water. Now, what are the chances? <laughs> hey, man, that all there happens to be some water close by. Stop. To, he said, what hindereth me? Listen, I said, what hindereth me from being baptized? Somebody out there right now wants to get in the water. They just want to know what's hindering me. And you're right there. But it's important to note Amen. What Philip said to him next. Philip said, listen, you got to believe. <laughs> and you can't play with this thing. You can't fake this thing. You got to believe that Jesus Christ. Amen. And the, and, 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 and the unit gives him a point blank response, doesn't he? Amen. He says, I believe that Jesus Christ, amen, is the Son of God. I wish I had a witness. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Amen. From that encounter, somebody said it might have been an accident. They just happened to run into each other. Somebody might have said it might have been some chance. 
Amen. That, that he, he's going to run into him. It might have been just chance that he had to catch him reading the word of God. I wish I had a witness. Amen. And there might have been chance that he needed some help. Amen. But in the end, we find out what he heard, what was interpreted to him and told to him. His spirit received it. He said, hey, he saw some water. Hey, he wasn't waiting until next week. He wasn't waiting until next year. He said, hey, do you believe? He said, I believe. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Scripture tells us they stopped. Yes, Amen. They stopped. Amen. When they stopped, they both went down in the water. Amen. Philip Amen. baptized him. Amen. Amen. They said he came up and said the Spirit took him away. Yes, he did. The Spirit took him away. Amen. Thank you. I told you a story. Now, now, this is secular, I'm telling you, but you've heard me say it about the time that the man was there from California when I was playing ball. Amen. He dropped some wisdom, some important wisdom. He said, don't act a fool because you're mad, <laughs> because you're upset. Just work harder and don't worry about it. Got me back in my starting position. I never saw the man again. I didn't even see him leave the building. I wish I had a witness. God is going to get it to you, Amen. and he may use Amen. you to do it, and then he moves you on to something else. Right. Amen. Amen. The important thing is that you were there to receive what God had for you. I wish I had a witness. Now, here's a, the beauty of this situation. It's not an accident. All the research that I found out that I read and on this uh, particular scriptural area reveals that, where do you think, of course, later on, the eunuch was headed back to his queen. Huh? Now he left one way, but he coming back filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Now he can't, he know for the, for he's the money man. He know for the treasure. Amen. But what he's carrying is more than gold and silver. And who do you think he shares that with? Hey, with the queen. And according to researchers, what they say is that she accepted Christ and it spread all over the place. I wish I had a witness. No accident. There's no accident since you're here today. There's no accident of what God has planned. I have not seen or ear heard. We have no idea what is coming. Amen. But there's no accident that you're here. God has a purpose for each and every one of you being here. Amen. And they that wait on the Lord. Amen. Shall renew. He'll reveal what it is. No accident. Don't you consider accident anything you do for God. Because there's purpose. So whether it's big or small. He called me and contacted me and said he's getting his baskets ready for the people over there. And they asked me for some of them cars. Some of them cars that I tried to get some of y'all to take out and, 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 and pass the folks. Just give it to them. You don't have to give them a long dissertation. And he said, well, I said, well, you need. He said, yeah, because I want to put them in the baskets and give them to the people. Now, what's the chance of that? <laughs> I would give God some praise. Amen. They're going to be used for the kingdom one way or the other. What am I saying here to church today? When it comes to God's business, he has a purpose and a plan for all of us to impact somebody's life. Amen. In the process, also, it blesses us. It changes us. When we let him use us to bless other people, it affects us in a positive way. Amen. I stopped coming in today <clears throat> over at the dollar store because I knew I needed some pay, some uh, tissue. Well, I went in, and I was in line. This guy looked like he was buying a lot of stuff. One of the fellas came in that was in the work release program. Yeah, the whole time he's coming in, he said, Reverend Trotter. I said, hey, man, how you doing? Because he fixed my car back in the day, does some things. I told him, Brother Jeff, Brother Calvin had been here in worship. He said, he said, where's the church at? I said, well, the church is right next to Flanner House right. over on Edge Mountain. Well, he lives in this area. He said, okay, he said, I'm going to come and, and, and worship with you. I said, yeah. I said, well, guess what? I said, the, the brotherhood will be meeting soon. I said, well, he said, well, yeah, but I want to hear you preach. I said, well, I said, we want you anytime you can come. Amen. He said, I'll be there. Amen. But we're going to get him at the brotherhood too. Right. One day he's going to come up in here. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Amen. It wasn't no accident for me to stop over and get those tissue. I was supposed to be there so I could see him. Amen. 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 
Well, you know what I did? He had his milk up there. I said, well, I got him. He said, Rev, you got it? I said, yeah, I got you, man. Take that and go on. You understand? God is good. Give God some praise. No accident. Amen. When it comes to God, men can have accidents. Amen. All kinds, big or small, whatever. But there are no accidents with God. When he's called you and touched your heart and drawn you toward him, you just keep on coming. Don't stop. Amen. Don't get weary. Don't let other folks deter you. Once you start, Satan is going to get busy. Satan has a purpose and a plan to stop you. Amen. From coming to God. But you just keep on pressing. Amen. You got to be like Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind. I wish I had a witness. I said, I'm going to press on. Now, press don't mean that you're going to take your time, but you feel there's an urgency that I got to press on to get to the presence of God. And when you do that, God's got a blessing for you. And it's not about dollars and cents. Always remember, it's not about dollars and cents. He'll take care of the dollars and cents, Jesus. Amen. He's one banker that doesn't run out. Amen. And he already knows the idea. He knows who you are. Amen. But when he wants to bless you, I wish I had a way. Anybody know about that? Hey, when he wants to bless you, that's why the songwriter said, anyway, anyway, that he blessed me, said, I'll be all right. And we've all been blessed by God. Give him some praise today. Salvation is no accident. God's got a plan. Amen. Let's go come to our feet. Doors of the church are open. Might be somebody today whose spirit has been stirred by the word of God or by the songs and the worship here today. But the Lord might be telling you this is the place to be. Amen. We're not talking about opulence here, but we're talking about spiritual uh, relationships with God. Amen. And if you have a spiritual relationship with God, that's more than opulence. Amen. That's something money can't buy. Amen. It's more valuable than gold. But you have to make that decision yourself. Amen. Is there one today who would like to give their life or unite with the body of Christ here? Hallelujah. Amen. This is a hot spot, I can tell you right now. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Holy Spirit, amen, is going to use us in a mighty way. But he may need you to be a part of what he wants done here. Amen. amen. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Amen. Might be someone here. That's God's business. The Holy Amen. Spirit's business. Amen. I can't see in your heart. I don't know whether you're hurting or not. Amen. I don't know whether you're tired of being out there. I don't know if the world is running you in here. All I know is if he's calling you, if Jesus is calling you, as they say, tenderly calling you, you need to come today and commit and give your life to the Lord. Is there one today? How many already know the Lord? Give me all hands. Amen. All right. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. I pray something was said today that encouraged you along your walk, your Christian walk, that will strengthen you, that will help you to share the word of God. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask uh, for our announcements to be read.
Amen. So the, the Sunday school play is next Sunday. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about that. What time? What time? Okay, regular Sunday school time. 10 o'clock. Okay, all right. And um, is going to be any of that uh, Christmas candy? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm just asking. You can't get away all right. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's great. God bless you. Now, in the spirit of, of, of that, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Deke, if you would, get a tray. Now, I, <clears throat> like I said, as a, as a pastor, a lot of things, it seems once I got that kind of hooked up, looked like folks started finding me, amen, for different things. I had uh, funerals. I want to say to uh, all of you that I did attend the uh, funeral of Bishop uh, Boyd's uh, brother's homecoming. He'd been with the post office 43 years. And bishops flew in and came from all over. And, uh, you know, this it was a, just a packed situation. Um, when it came time for the resolutions, the first name that was called up was First Church of Christ Holy. Amen. Amen. So to my clerk, you know, I'm glad to see we could represent. <laughs> there were many of them. We were first, and so uh, we thank God for, for that, and I'm sure they appreciate it as well. Uh, so keep them in, in, your, in your prayer. Um, but saying that to say this, I did receive a call from uh, a young man that I, uh, he had been a member of my church uh, years ago. And of course, he got married and um, got his lights turned off. He's married, him and his wife have eight kids. Now, I remember last time I heard he had four, but he has eight from 13 on down. <clears throat> so you know he's got to come here sometime now, don't you? But... Uh, he said that they said they would turn it off on the, I mean, that he'd have to have it in by 21st, but they surprised him and turned it off on the, on the, I guess, what, last Thursday. And so they've been trying to get the money together, and they've got it down to, I think, uh, about $250. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. And they contacted me and said, well, whatever we could do. I said, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I said, I'll bring it to the church. Amen, because this is a season of giving. I said, and, and uh, whatever they decide, whatever they do, we'll work with that. And behind the, you can't tell him officially, but whatever falls short, I'm going to pick up the tab. Amen. <clears throat> and he said, they're still without lights. But um, I feel it, it is an opportunity for us to bless uh, someone that he's a decent fellow, a hardworking guy. Amen. He's not, he's not a shyster or a jokester, but. I think sometimes a chance for all of us, I don't care what do you have to give, whether it's a dime, a dollar, whatever, collectively, if we put something in there and bless them, you know, it'll get them closer to, the, to getting those lights turned on. I can only imagine, but I've been in a situation where the, the light company say one thing and they do something else. Anybody know about that? <laughs> you know, and you can't go down and talk to folks like you used to. Man, the computer will keep you caught on hold and waiting. Sometimes they disconnect on purpose. <laughs> but amen, let's see if we can help this family. So amen, why don't you play some music while that's going on. And if you got something that you can give, amen, to bless this family besides your tithes and offerings, I, if you do that, I appreciate that. Whatever, Deacon, I'm going to ask you to pray over it. But just raise your hand. These young men will get to you real quick. <laughs> These young men move fast. God bless you. 